السلام علیکم دس از اے پریزنٹیشن فار میڈیکل اسٹوڈنٹس بائی ڈاکٹر ممتاز احمد عمر اینڈ ٹوڈیز ٹاپک از ان ڈائریکٹ لرینگوسکوپی اور مور فیمسلی نون ایز آئی ڈی ایل ہیئر آر دا لرننگ آبجیکٹوس فار دس کرنٹ پریزنٹیشن اینڈ وی ول ڈسکس دیم ان آور سکسیڈنگ سلائڈس So first of all the introduction indirect laryngoscopy or IDL it is an OPD based procedure and it helps to examine the laryngopharyngeal structures indirectly as a reflection on the mirror the IDL mirror and the light it is used to assess the mobility of the vocal cords it is relatively a simple office based procedure and it is used to diagnose various throat and voice related issues it is often the first step in examining the larynx and it precedes any advanced laryngeal investigations if required like flexible laryngoscopy or the rigid laryngoscopy uh, and in advanced cases even direct laryngoscopy so this is the first step to look at the that it is an essential ent skill it is an essential ent skill for all medical students meaning that all, all medical students should know how to perform indirect laryngoscopy so next comes the indications though as already mentioned it is a routine ent examination step but still there are certain conditions in which it this step becomes mandatory like any patient presenting with hoarseness of voice especially if it is persisting for more than 2 3 days then if there is any suspected foreign body in the throat or there is foreign body sensation breathing difficulty if a patient presents with breathing difficulty or stridor due to suspected laryngeal mass or lesion then larynx has to be examined chronic cough or throat clearing if present in the patient as already mentioned to assess the vocal cord mobility so in cases of vocal cord palsy to evaluate its mobility uh, one has to perform indirect laryngoscopy and preoperative airway assessment there are certain contraindications or limitations in performing indirect laryngoscopy like if the patient has severe gag reflex or very apprehensive patient it may become quite difficult to do perform indirect laryngoscopy then uncooperative patients uh, in small age it's not possible if the patient has limited mouth opening trismus which is called trismus so the mirror will not be able to pass inside any orofacial trauma if patient has uh glossitis or uh, ulcers on the tongue because we have to pull out the tongue and hold the tongue then it becomes very difficult or any patient who is not able to sit up as to perform indirect laryngoscopy we see will see later on uh, patient there is proper positioning of the patient patient has to be in sitting position so bedridden patients comatose patients this procedure will not be possible this is the equipment which is needed to perform indirect laryngoscopy consisting of the light through headlight it is an led light then the ideal or the straight mirror the gauze piece to pull out the tongue and the lighter the flame from uh, from the lighter it will heat the mirror end so the fog from the mouth will not cause hindrance to our view okay for the procedure the steps are uh, it use a small straight mirror or the indirect laryngoscopy mirror which is held at the back of the throat the mirror is heated to prevent the fog tongue is pulled out with the gauze piece and the mirror is inserted in the mouth facing downwards and lifting the uvula up light is directed inside either through the head mirror setup or the headlight since uh, nowadays there is very easy availability of headlights so this headlight is preferred now 
to visualize the laryngopharyngeal structures indirectly through the mirror. So these are the indirect laryngoscopy mirrors of different sizes. Okay, one point to mention here is that this instrument is not indirect laryngoscope. It is indirect laryngoscopy mirror because we are seeing through the mirror. So you have to write mirror in addition to indirect laryngoscopy. So one will have clear idea when you write indirect laryngoscopy mirror that we are seeing through the mirror. There are certain other similar instruments like indirect laryngoscopy mirror which are the dental mirrors but their angle is not, uh, they are wide angle whereas if you see this angle it is acute around 120, 100 to 105 to 120 degree but dental mirrors are little more wider than this. And then these mirrors are of different sizes. The size is written on the back of the mirror. This is size 6. So 7, 8, uh, 9 or uh, even small than the smaller size are also available. But 6 is the, uh, you can say 6, 7 size is the ideal. So this is the diagrammatic representation how to hold the tongue and introduce the mirror so looking at this picture the mirror and is facing downwards it is pushed inside up till the uvula lifting the uvula up one has to be careful that not to touch the posterior pharyngeal wall because then it will cause gag reflex but only touching the uvula and lifting it will not induce any gag reflex so the tongue is held between the thumb and the middle finger while the index finger is used to retract the lip upwards and tongue is pulled out and down while the mirror facing downward its back will uh, lift the uvula upwards and we will be able to visualize the structures the laryngopharyngeal structures as a reflection in the mirror. So, if we see in the original patient, the, I am holding the tongue and retracting the upper lip with my index finger and mirror I am introducing facing downwards. The front view of the same, how the lip is retracted and tongue is held between the thumb and the middle finger with a gauze piece and pulled out and the mirror is inside more clear more clear will be in the next picture so this is the mirror which is lifting the uvula up and now we are able to see the structures down this is the epiglottis and these inside white things are the true vocal cords so the normal findings which we can see are the pink moist laryngeal mucosa there will be symmetrical vocal cord movements. There will be no mass or lesion visible and the airway will be clear. Advantages of performing IDL is that it is a quick and inexpensive. Like as I have said, uh, flexible laryngoscopy or rigid laryngoscopy, uh, they carry extra charges and direct laryngoscopy as performed under general anesthesia will be more costly. No anesthesia is required usually, meaning most of the time it can be done as such without any anesthesia. But in apprehensive patients or little uncooperative, we can give a trial with the local anesthesia, meaning either you can spray the mouth uh, with a local anesthetic or you give the solution for the uh, to the patient to gargles and then in some cases we might be able to perform the procedure it can be done in opd and it is a very useful for initial evaluation okay there are certain limitations to this procedure as well incomplete view in some patients gagging may interfere with the procedure if there is an overhanging epiglottis then again we will not be able to visualize the structures underneath or behind that cannot assess some regions 
there are certain hidden areas uh, while performing or difficult to assess or see areas in indirect laryngoscopy uh, one is the uh, infrahyoid part of laryngeal surface of epiglottis anterior commissure laryngeal ventricle base of piriform sinus subglottis so these are the hidden areas to assess them we need to perform flexible laryngoscopy or direct laryngoscopy again this procedure is difficult to perform in children or anxious patients so there are certain precaution and tips always warm the mirror to avoid fogging be gentle to avoid triggering the gag reflex and gentleness mean as we are pulling the tongue if we do it forcefully it can hurt the patient use of topical xylocaine solution in gargles form or spray form if needed and most importantly before we start the procedure we have to clearly explain the patients what we are gonna do now so reassurance is very important to reassure the patient you have to tell the patient properly about the procedure and it will not cause any harm or complication so the structures which we can examine with indirect laryngoscopy there is a whole list of these structures starting from the base of the tongue lingual tonsil right and left bellicula epiglottis area epiglottic fold arytenoids false cords true vocal cords anterior and the posterior commissure right and left preform sinus post cricoid region subglottic area mobility of the vocal cords should be observed Uh, so to assess the mobility of the vocal cords we will ask the patient to say e and when he pronounce the word e the vocal cords will move and we can see their mobility properly so subglottic is written here where in the previous slide i mentioned it is a hidden area so yes we can get a glimpse of the subglottic area but to see detail part of the subglottis it will be difficult but anything underneath vocal cords can be visible it gives a glimpse but not clearly so this is the picture showing all these structures which i have just mentioned so all the medical students should know how to draw this picture and how to label it properly one area is missing the labeling is not complete in this picture so you can uh, consult your book uh, this area is the arytenoids and arytenoids you have to label that because it's a very important cartilage in this part which is connecting and interarytenoid is the posterior commissure so you need to know how to draw and label the diagram okay now uh, before proceeding to the actual procedure uh, what is happening now so i am performing indirect laryngoscopy in the patient so before performing the procedure it is very important to have the proper sitting arrangement the level of the patient and the doctor should be at the same level the legs should be across in opposite gender and in the same gender it either can be across or in between no problem uh then you have to explain the procedure to the patient that you uh you want to look behind the back of the throat part with the help of a mirror as this area or this part will not be visible by directly looking inside the mouth so to do that you have to use a mirror uh and you will pass the mirror inside the mouth without causing any pain to the patient and you will heat the mirror the mirror and but it will not be too much hot why because to prevent the fog from occurring on the mirror side but you will check first on yourself and then you will check it on the patient to reassure him that it is not too hot so but as in pakistan you have to explain it in urdu to the patient so you will said abhi main aapke gale ke pichle se ka mayna karunga 
تاکہ مجھے گلے کے نچلے حصے نظر آ جائے اس کے لئے میں نے ایک شیشے کا استعمال کرنا ہے شیشے کو میں گرم کروں گا اور پہلے میں اپنا چیک کروں گا پھر آپ کو کراؤں گا گرم اس لئے کریں گے تاکہ اس پر بھاپ نہ جمع لیکن وہ اتنا گرم نہیں ہوگا اور اس عمل میں آپ کو تکلیف نہیں ہوگی اس کے بعد میں آپ کو کہوں گا کہ ای بولیں تو آپ نے ای بولنا ہوگا تاکہ ہمیں بولنے والی تاروں کی حرکت کا بھی پتا چل جائے and this way you will counsel and reassure to the patient Okay, so this is the procedure of indirect langoscopy. I'm hitting the mirror end uh, with a lighter. Now I will first check it on myself. So it's not too hot. Then I will have checked it to the patient. Now I'll switch on the light, get into proper position and ask the patient to open the mouth. Held the tongue between thumb and middle finger and index finger is used to retract the upper lip and I am asking the patient to say E so the patient is pronouncing E and I am able to visualize uh, in the mirror so once I have examined all the things and see the mobility the procedure is over so now the close view inside the tongue is held and the mirror is used to lift the tongue uh, 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 or not uh, is uh, uh, patient is saying uh, e uh, and we see the uh, movement uh, of the vocal cords thank you